Sailing into the dazzling blue waters of the Mediterranean Sea on my first ever Mediterranean cruise was such a memorable bucket list experience. My name is Antoinette and on my channel I help you plan well, have fun, and travel the world. In today's video, I'm sharing with you what you need to know before a Mediterranean cruise based on my experience as a first timer. I had a lot of questions about the weather, so let me answer a few of them right up front. Mediterranean cruises are typically from late April all the way through October, the warmest months of the year in Europe. The temperature can reach 80, 90, even 100 degrees Fahrenheit, so expect it to be hot, okay? We'll talk about what to wear later in the video, but another question that I had was, is it cold at night on a Mediterranean cruise? And the answer to that is yes. It is cold, as hot as it may be during the day. At night, it can be much cooler, reaching 50 or 40 degrees Fahrenheit. So bring a light jacket for evening activity. Is the Mediterranean Sea rough for cruising? Are Mediterranean cruises pretty calm? And what I found is that generally, sailing on the Mediterranean is pretty calm, but with a temperature change and possibly strong winds at night, you may experience a night or two of choppy sail. That's what happened to us on our last night. We were on a large cruise ship, so we didn't feel the chop, but looking out on our balcony, we saw the chop and going to the spa, we heard the chop. Overall, it wasn't really anything to be concerned about, but if you're sailing on a smaller vessel, definitely bring some Dramamine or drink some ginger ale or whatever it is you need to do, wear a patch to avoid getting seasick. Now let's talk about planning. Arrive one to three days before your cruise to avoid stress in case of any transportation or flight issues like baggage delays or transportation strikes and leave one to two days after the cruise for the exact same reason. Mediterranean cruises are during peak travel season. Just for reference, I planned our Mediterranean cruise for May but we actually booked our hotel in November and guess what? My hun and I got the last room in the hotel, literally. Our cruise was based in Barcelona, Spain, so we booked our hotel and our activities as early as possible. We did a cooking tour to make paella, we did a bike tour, we went to La Sagrada Familia, just like you saw in my we waited three years to get to Barcelona vlog. And because it's peak season, yes, it will be crowded, but a little less so if you book during the best time of year to visit the Mediterranean Sea, which is the shoulder season from either April to May or from September to October. There are multiple itineraries to choose from, ranging from two nights to two weeks. You can visit two countries or seven one city or 10. Choose the ports that you're most interested in seeing and the length of time you would like to stay in each city. Book eight months to a year in advance for the best deals if possible. That brings me to the next thing you need to know for a Mediterranean cruise. If you want more activities on board, then book a larger ship. If not, then book a smaller one. Also remember to look at what city the cruise starts at and what city it ends at because every cruise doesn't start and end at the same location. And I'd hate for you to book a round trip transportation to say, to and from Rome, Italy, for example, and then you end up in Greece at the end of your cruise wondering, ah, how do I get back, what's going on? We sailed on Royal Caribbean's Wonder of the Seas, which is one of the largest cruise ships in the world. So we had plenty of activities and plenty of fun, but choose the ship that's right for you. Now let's talk about cash. How much money should you bring on a Mediterranean cruise? I recommend always having small denominations of euros as some places only accept cash for tips and transportation and souvenirs. So I recommend at least maybe about 100 euros per person in smaller bills. Try not to get 50 or 100 euro notes because most places can't break the change and so you're stuck there with all this money and nowhere to use it. There may be an ATM on board the ship and most places take credit cards and some even have a minimum spend on it. But I would pick up euros at an ATM at the airport or a local bank for the best exchange rate and when prompted, never accept the conversion to United States dollars because you'll pay more for the exchange. My next tip is don't be a peer runner. Peer runners are late passengers who have to literally sprint down the gangways to their cruise ship in order to avoid being left behind. To the amusement of the onlookers who are comfortably on board. Don't be them. People will cheer, they will yell at you, they will laugh at you. It's like a public shaming event that you don't want to take part of. Research beforehand how to get to city centers as ports of call may be far away. And most ports don't even allow you to walk from the cruise ship on the port. You have to take a bus or a taxi or some other transportation. If you don't return on time, you will be left behind at your own expense per the cruise contract. For example, Rome, Italy's Civitavecchia cruise port is almost an hour away by car, assuming there's no traffic. Like no traffic in Rome, that's, that's not gonna happen. Taking the local train or bus to the city center is usually much cheaper than buying a huge city transfer from the cruise line or taking a taxi. When we were in Rome, we took 
a port bus for three euros and rode the train into the city for less than five euros. So about eight euros one way or 16 euros for a round trip. If we were to take the cruise lines, transportation, they were charging between 50 and 70 euros per person. So you can save a lot of money if you just take the public transportation available. But I would reserve DIY transport for those able-bodied and adventurous travelers and those who know how to comfortably navigate public transportation in Europe. I've been to Rome three times and y'all, I almost didn't make it on the way back. I almost didn't make it. So know the time you need to return to the ship, set an alarm, and then add 30 minutes on top of that. Take your cruise ID, your license, and copies of your passport and your credit cards with you just in case something happens. Oh, I forgot to mention, if you have questions about any of the tips I'm giving, feel free to write in the comments down below. Or if you've been on a Mediterranean cruise and you have some tips, please share them in the comments below so we can all learn from each other. The next thing you need to know for a Mediterranean cruise is that you need endurance. Mediterranean cruises have an intense schedule with a new country in a new city in a new language just about every single day. The benefit is that you get to experience a sampler platter of destination. Just like at a restaurant, a sampler platter gives you a little taste of the different items on the menu. Mediterranean cruises are just like that. You get a sample of the culture and the cuisine and the architecture and the major attractions of a number of different Mediterranean cities and ports in Europe. You get to sample each location to determine whether or not you wanna spend a longer amount of time there at a later date. The downside, however, is that it can just be exhausting. Let me be honest, it can be a little exhausting. Going to a new country and a new city with a new language every single day. So if it sounds a little bit exhausting to you, I would suggest looking for an itinerary with longer stays in a port if you prefer a slower pace. While English is widely spoken, consider it the exception rather than the rule and expect to communicate the basics in different languages, like hello, please, thank you, your number is zero to nine, and questions like where's the bathroom? Can you help me? Please. I always download the offline versions of different languages using Google Translate, which is an app that'll translate speech into text in many different languages. Also, don't forget to enable international calling through your cell phone provider and get international data coverage through your provider or buy a local eSIM. Now that you know to have endurance for your trip, let's talk about the vibe on board. Mediterranean cruises have a more international vibe than your typical Caribbean cruises, which are mostly based out of the United States that shows up in different ways throughout your trip. One of the ways it could show up is the type of cruisers who are boarding the ship. Since it's based in Europe, you'll see a lot of Europeans, uh, folks from the Middle East, Asian folks, North African folks. The passengers may be a little bit more reserved during shows. If they like something, they might give it a good, respectable clap as opposed to a loud, yeah, that was the most awesome. Did you see the flip and the flip? Yoo-hoo, whistles and cheers. You'll also see the passengers dressed in what I like to call like that Euro chic, that European chic dressing where, you know, the guys just roll out of bed with like a suit coat and like leather shoes just because that's how they roll. You'll also find an international vibe when it comes to the music and the games on board. Instead of the top 40 for the US, you'll get the international top 40. We went to a trivia game where you guess the name of the artist and you guess the name of the song. And whoever gets the most points, of course, wins. We were killing the game. Okay, I know this song, I know this song. But then there was one song that was played and everybody in the room roared like, oh, yay, they started singing the song. I had no idea what this song was. I had never heard of it. But apparently everybody else on the cruise did. You'll get to listen to some really cool new international music. And it also shows up in the cuisine. Instead of having one international station like on a Caribbean cruise, consider the entire buffet an international station. Let's take breakfast for example. On our Mediterranean cruise, we were going there looking for bacon and eggs and waffles and pancakes and orange juice and fruit or cereal. When we got to the buffet, they had those items, but there were also things like baked beans, deli meat, deli cheeses and breads. And I remember one lady going in the cruise ship, like looking at her watch like, oh, is my watch off? Cause all I see are deli meats and cheeses. Is it lunchtime? Are people making sandwiches? The answer is no. It's a more international vibe and breakfast looks different according to the different country and the different culture. So embrace the vibe and have a great time. You'll learn some new things and get to speak with people from all over the world. And it's really an awesome experience. 
My next tip is to plan your days well. You'll show up to a Mediterranean cruise port all day long. So it's typically from 7 or 8 a.m. to 5, 6 or 7 p.m. at night. With so much to see during the day and the night, make sure you get enough sleep and stay hydrated and lathered on with sunblock. Like I said before, it is hot and you may become dehydrated a lot faster than you realize. And that can show up in different ways like dizziness, unexplained anger, and even fainting all the way up until heat stroke. Pace yourself, carry water with you, carry a small sunblock in your day bag and chug that water whenever you can. It's easy to get exhausted being at a new port in a new city every day, spending all day outside in the hot sun, coming all day to parties on the ship at night. Plan well and take care of yourself. Another question I had before my first Mediterranean cruise was, what do you wear on a Mediterranean cruise? Well, I recommend dressing for the activities you want to participate in and make sure your clothing is light and light colored breathable and moisture wicking. If you plan to eat in the main dining hall, bring at least one to two semi to formal outfits. And we talked about how hot it can be multiple times. Are y'all hearing me? It is hot. So expect to bring more changes of clothes and underwear than you typically would pack. My biggest, most game changing tip of our Mediterranean cruise, it is this. Take advantage of any laundry specials on board. On the second to last night of our seven day Western Mediterranean cruise, there was a laundry special. Fill up a bag for $35. We decided why not? So we paid our $35 and everything was returned to us washed, pressed, folded, and smelling very, very good. So we were out there sweating out our clothes every single day. And when it came back smelling so good and this bag neatly folded. I was just so happy. And one of the worst things about coming home from vacation is doing the laundry, but to have my laundry already done and folded, so I just put back in my suitcase, that was a game changer. And I will forever look for a laundry special on a seven night or more cruise just so I don't have to do laundry. In the alternative, you can also bring a little Tide packet or a little laundry packet and do laundry and hang it up in your room. I highly recommend taking advantage of any laundry specials if they are on board. Game changer for sure and a very valuable investment. If you wanna see what it's like actually on board a Mediterranean cruise and what it's like actually stopping in Spain, France, and Italy, you'll definitely want to watch my planning a Mediterranean cruise playlist at the end of this video. If you found any of these tips helpful, please give this video a thumbs up and remember to plan well, have fun, and travel the world. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next video. Bye.